Welcome back to Giza Stock for Insights. If you've just joined us, we touched on burial clubs that want to transition into becoming investors within the property markets and how they can choose the right property developer for them with my resident guest expert, Tabiso Masurubele from Thai Vision Media. Now, how do they begin the process of picking the right property developer for them? So, Remember, we spoke about the business plan, them having developed a business plan. Uh, the best process would probably be look at who are the different property developers that are around. And some of that professional advice would come with the, peop the very people who are assisting them uh, to develop that business plan. So as part of the process of building the business plan, you then look at the types of infrastructure development that you're looking at. So if there's something similar, obviously you would have seen in another community, you then have to go about and say, we're looking for a shopping center that looks like that particular one. And then you then go and find out which developer was responsible for that property development. So property developers have specialization. So you've, you've got people who develop office parks, you've got people who are specialists with developing shopping centers, mass shopping centers, and you've got people who've developed it developed expertise with building community-based shopping centers. These aren't your large malls, but your smaller version, which are within communities. So you then engage the different players and look for options. And the idea is not to engage one property specialist, but to look at the different properties which are similar to what you're wanting to achieve, finding out who would have done that one, and then beginning discussions with those different property developers. And then once you've got that basket of people who are able to assist you, you're then able to be in a position to say, we think that these guys are guys we can try to move this thing forward with, or these are the guys who would be more willing to work with us. Now, when we look at the high-end markets, you know, it would be much more mm. favorable for property developers to go for. But what is the potential of them also looking at the township markets as well? Uh, I think one thing that we've always advocated for is we don't think that the full potential of stock fells is being realized, particularly by sectors such as property developers, uh, even governments for, for that matter, who are looking at making sure that you know South Africa becomes a construction site with the resources that sit within Stockfells. Uh, that then means that there's absolutely an opportunity for people who are looking to co-invest with Stockfells. Uh, so what that means is that the sector generally hasn't looked at stock fells as vehicles which could help them realize their, their products. Is it because of lack of research, lack of data, information? I think it's because primarily lack of information around stock fells and how they work. So I think that the corporate sector hasn't allowed itself enough time to get a thorough understanding of the stock fell sector, including the nuances within the stock fell sector. So you've got a stock fell sector that says, We've got a lot of money in savings accounts and we want to invest. And you've got a private sector that, you know, is also looking to co-invest with people who are looking to do the same thing. And then there's just no meeting ground of where you have a meeting of the minds where people are seeing this opportunity. I think by and large corporates recognize the buying potential and the commercial potential within communities, but not necessarily the potential of co-investment such as with stock fells. So they're largely seen as consumers rather than organizations that are also looking to invest. So if you look at what then typically gets advertised within the sector are products that are consumed by the sector. You know, whether they be financial service products, whether they be retail products, but very little is done to incentivize people and to say, how can we assist groups that are looking to invest and how can we work together to make sure that those resources that are in savings accounts are put to work. Now, just looking at the big challenge that they have right now, Fairview Memorial Club um, mm. stated that they need advice on how to alleviate financial pressures that come from multiple claims. So once again, can you please just explain to us what an underwriter is and their role? Very important. So an underwriter is a registered financial service provider that's authorized to offer financial products such as funeral cover. Now, having an underwriter answers that immediate challenge, which means that 
once they're paying premiums to an authorized underwriter, they virtually guaranteed that all their claims would be paid without depleting their resources. And again, Nonto talks to the trend that we've seen where stock files are using a savings account, which they want to use for future investments, but they can't really use it for future investments because they have to keep it there in the event that they get claims. So once they have an underwriter, what that does, it unlocks that uh, capital that they might have in an account, meaning they no longer use need to uh, rely on that money to pay claims. They'll have an underwriter who'll be liable for those claims, which means that the resources that they'd have in their account become freed to look at what possible investments that they can do. So that model we think is a win-win for Stockfiles because what then happens is that their main concern of making sure that all claims are paid would be sorted out. And then how they then have seed capital for investing, the money that they then have in their savings account becomes capital that they can start using either for seed, seed capital for whatever investments they're looking at doing, paying costs of professionals, helping them develop uh, you know, whatever business plans they have and so on and so forth. Now, what organizations are offering some really affordable and reasonable um, funeral <laughs> covers right now that, you know, burial <laughs> societies can look at? It's different. I think with, with the funeral space, you know, it's one of the things that we're saying is that there's so many funeral products out there. I think many, many companies are offered, offering funeral cover. For us, when we engage with stockfills and burial societies is to say, look at value. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that groups make is that they look for the cheapest premium, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but you need to understand why that thing would be as cheap as it is. You know, there's a saying that good group is dear group in Africa. Yeah, good group is dear group. So sometimes you get a premium that's too good to be true. And it's from someone or an, an entity that's not an authorized FSP. The only challenge is that you find out why it's that cheap at the time that you need your claim to be paid the most. So at the time when you're supposed to get your claim paid, there's then some, you know, fine print that says, no, note that this, you know, this is an exclusion clause or whatever, which then explains why it would have been cheap. So instead of looking for the cheapest, we say people should look out for the basket. And there are really good products out there. But you look at what would work for you as a group or you as a person in terms of the value that you're looking for. A lot of people in the peri-urban area, because of access to certain things, they prefer their payout not to be cash, but to be the form of a service. Because they know there's a funeral pilot down the road, they don't need to have the cash with them, they need the actual service for the funeral to happen. That has its own advantages and disadvantages. Some people, when you look at, you know, the township environment, community, urban community, there's a preference for cash payments. Even with that, you then look at over and above the cash component of the claim. What else am I getting? The turnaround time. How quickly do they pay their claim? Uh, between me paying premiums and when I don't claim, what happens? Is there any cash back? Uh, when I do have a query, I need to add someone as a beneficiary. Do I hold on, you know, for 30 minutes uh, calling a call? contact center. So those are the types of things that people really have to nitpick and look at something that would create value for themselves. And that value goes beyond just a rand value that you're paying as a premium. So reprioritize your list. Don't make affordability right at the top. Don't place it there. And read the fine prints as well so that you understand what you are getting yourself into. Absolutely. There are many investment opportunities offered in the markets, and it's important to ensure that you choose one that is appropriately registered with the financial services provider, often called an FSP. If you would like to ensure that you and your stock fell are investing through a legitimate registered FSP, contact us using the details on the screen below. Until next time, goodbye. This program was brought to you by Thai Vision Media helping stock fells and burial societies reach their goals.